Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Happy Harvest Homestead. Today, we're going to the garden, and I'm going to bring you along as I finally get to reap the harvest I've been working so hard on all year. As you know, we feed our meat rabbits a natural diet, but that becomes really hard in winter time because you can't harvest fresh greens. Mostly we feed hay, but I also like to supplement with garden produce that can store well in our storage room root cellar place without having to be like preserved or refrigerated or frozen or anything. They can just sit in a cool dry place and be good for all winter long. Stuff like dried sunflower heads and pumpkins and sweet potatoes and especially beets. I have a bit of time before evening animal chores need to be done and this morning I was picking the tops off of the beets to feed the rabbits for their morning breakfast and I was noticing how big some of them were getting. So this area is all beets. It goes from here all the way down there. And this is where I was picking this morning, but these leaves are nice and big, except for that all the huge beet leaves are shading out these smaller ones. So you can see there's like this tiny little beet that can't grow because monster beets kind of like this one, look how huge this is. The huge leaves are shading it out. So I'm clipping the leaves, trying to give these little guys some more sunlight. I've done this like three or four times throughout the year, but they keep growing back so fast that the little guys aren't getting much of a chance. So I'm harvesting the big beets partially just to get them out of the ground and start the process of storing them, but mostly because I want to give the little guys a chance to grow bigger before winter sets in. I don't want to wait to harvest all the beets until winter time, then have half my harvest wasted because they were shaded out by the bigger ones. So even though the bigger ones probably could grow a little bit bigger, I prefer the smaller ones to get a better chance than the bigger ones to grow even more massive. So I guess I'm planning on picking them, rinsing off the dirt in the hose or something, letting them dry overnight maybe, or maybe towel drying them. I guess just drying overnight would be pretty easy. I am actually really proud though of all these beets. I, this is the most mango beets I have ever grown. My goal has always been to grow a whole bunch, but they haven't actually grown for a long while. So this is the first one, the first harvest of the actual mango beet of 2022 for the rabbit. This is so exciting. I mean, like you look forward to, ooh, ooh. Oh yeah, look at that, that's huge. In case you're wondering, mango beets are a special type or variety or breed of beet that's meant to be for animal feed. As you can see, it grows huge, but it's said to be very tough and chewy and not enjoyable for human consumption. I've obviously, because of that, I've never tried eating one. And also because I don't wanna waste it when I could feed the animals, but the animals don't care if it's a little tougher than human palatable beets. We have some people beets over here and then the animal beets in this area. Okay, so we got two huge ones. Looking for some other biggies. I've picked all the huge beets except for this Mongo man. He's huge. I'm leaving him on purpose so that he can hopefully next year flower and go to seed so we can collect seeds from this awesome huge guy. I'm also saving this big guy for seed too. Woohoo, look at these! Some, okay, so some of these are huge ones and then a couple I picked were like had bug damage or were rotting or something. I've left most of them and I'm going to continue clipping them and hopefully the medium sized ones will quickly grow bigger and I can get those out of the way and the mixture of taking these big ones out and clipping the rest of them down to regrow later will help the little ones get a little extra boost. Okay, now I have to clip the leaves off of the roots. I want to wash the dirt off the roots as well. Look at that. There's so many of them. And I guess I don't have to pick any rabbit greens tonight either. This will be plenty for them. Guess who gets some beet greens? Even though they haven't finished their greens from this morning, might as well give them some more. I can't. Just finished washing them all. And can you believe this color? It's literally like super bright, hot pink. It's so crazy. <laughs> oh. All right, we're now in the garage. 
I walked up those stairs and I'm at the loft area now. Oh, those buckets are heavy, man. I have this little drying rack with some sunflower heads that are already drying, as well as some chamomile I picked a while ago. That's dry, all for rabbit feed. And I'm gonna lay these beets over here to dry as well. Mostly just because they're wet because I washed them off. I'll probably check them tomorrow. Oh my gosh, you guys, you do not know how happy this makes me. As I already mentioned, I've tried to grow a whole bunch of beets in the past for the rabbits, but it hasn't worked out so well. And this year, it's finally working, and this is just the start of the awesome harvest we have. I'm so excited to come check back tomorrow and see if they're dry. It's a few days later, and I think they're dry. It has been a few days since we put the beets away in our house and I checked them once off camera and there was only one of them that was really moldy but it was like eaten by bugs and kind of gross beforehand anyways. So I flipped all of them. I'm now going to check and flip them again. They still feel kind of soft and kind of squishy. Like the outsides are hard but like the middles and insides are squishy. And there's like tiny bits of mold on like these bug eaten ones. But it's not super moldy, and I'm maybe hoping the mold will go away. Maybe I just don't want to face the fact that some of my project has failed. But the ones that, like, aren't super bug-eaten are kind of- Oh, there's a bit of mold growing on this one, too. Dang it! The other ones weren't moldy. Let's- But this one isn't moldy, is it? Oh, a teeny bit. Well, I'll keep flipping them, and maybe if they dry out, the mold will die. And this end is moldy. Dang it! This isn't working like I was did last year. Yeah, this end is moldy. Let's just flip them all. Oh, did you see this wet spot on this one? It's definitely not all the way dry. Ugh, look, yeah, that, look at this one. This one's kind of smelling bad. Maybe I'll cut the moldy bit off and leave the other bit on. So I cut it off and look at the grossness on the inside. This did have damage. It's way on the inside, too. Thank goodness we're not eating this. But, like, look at the white skin of it, too. It looks all hard and nasty uh, and so fibrous. I definitely would not want to eat this. But the animals don't really care. Even though I was really excited that we had succeeded and now it seems like we're failing, I can come for myself. We still have time to experiment and learn. We can still buy pellets from the store or hay from the store. If we're super desperate, we don't need to feed our animals on only things we can grow. So we still can learn and make mistakes, even though it's really sad when we do.